Copy the following title into your notebook, Multiplication by a Decimal, Estimation, and Solving. Today we're learning how to multiply a decimal by a decimal and how to apply what we learned about mental multiplication to estimate these problems. As we go through this work, you can pause the video to take the time to copy things down if you need extra time. Also, if I'm going over a practice problem with you and you wanna challenge yourself and try it before I go over it, pause the video and give it a try. Then when you click play, you'll see me go over it with you and you can check over your work. Okay, let's get started. We're going to learn to multiply two and 35 hundredths times eight tenths, multiplying a decimal by a decimal. First, we'll set the problem up like this. And just like we did when we multiplied a whole number times a decimal, we paid attention to the place value, right? So if you look at the first factor, there's two decimals. But in the previous problems we solved, there were no decimals here. But in this case, you can see that there's one decimal place. So just like we learned with other problems, right? If I were to show this as a fraction, it would actually look like this. This is 235, 235 hundredths, right? And this problem here, this factor I mean, is eight. So you can see that when we multiply our numerators and denominators, I'm not going to solve the numerator, but just so I want you to see the denominator, when I multiply 100 times 10, that equals 1,000. Or it means that whatever your product is, is going to be to the thousandths place. So look at the decimals here. If I add up two decimal places and one decimal place, that gives me three decimal places, which is to the thousandths place. So that means that our answer is going to be to the thousandths place. So let's solve and then we'll talk about the rule. I'm going to erase this and rewrite it so that these circles don't confuse you. Okay, copy this down in your notebook. Remember, if you need extra time, pause the video. 8 times 5 is 40. Carry the 4. 8 times 3 is 24. Plus 4 is 28. I'll carry the 2. 8 times 2 is 16. Plus 2 is 18. I don't need to multiply zero times all those numbers because it's zero. I'm done. I'm going to have two plus one. I'm going to have three decimal places, which means that I'm going to need to put it one, two, three places over, which means that my answer when I simplify it, because that zero holds no value, is one and 88 hundredths. If I wrote it unsimplified, it would be one and 880 thousandths, which is to the thousandths place. We just knock this guy off because it doesn't hold any value, right? That's like saying that you are 10 years old like this. We don't say that, right? We just say we are 10 years old, even though technically with the zero in front of it, it doesn't change the number. Okay, let's estimate the value of 22 and 8 tenths times 7 tenths using what we know about mental math. First, this factor is going to stay the same going to be 7 tenths because it's just a one non-zero digit. Make sure you're copying this down into your notebook neatly with me. This is helpful for learning when you copy things down and you're learning note-taking skills so that you can come back and find your work later when you're stuck on something. This number here, I'm just going to round it to the greatest place value. 22 and 8 tenths rounded to the tenths place is 20. And now I can solve using the strategies that we've learned before. I'll split this up into seven and one tenth. I'll solve first by doing 20 times seven. Two times seven is 14 plus the zero, means that 20 times seven is 140. Now we still have to multiply that by one tenth. When we multiply by one tenth, remember this is like this as a fraction, one tenth, and this means divided by, which means that our decimal is moving one place to the left, which means that our estimated answer is 14, because we don't need to write the decimal and the zero because it doesn't hold any value. So the estimated answer is 14. Now let's get the actual answer together. We're going to set it up like this, 22 and 8 tenths times 7 tenths, and I have one decimal in my first factor and one decimal in my second factor. Remember, 20 
22 and 8 tenths could be written like this as a fraction. It's 228 tenths. And then, let me get rid of that. And then 7 tenths would be written like this. When we multiply those two numbers together, 10 times 10 equals 100, which means that your product is going to be to the hundredths place. We add these two decimals together and add that into our answer. So let's go ahead and solve. Um, 7 times 8 is 56, carry the 5. 7 times 2 is 14, plus 5 is 19. 7 times 2 is 14, plus 1 is 15. I have two decimal places that I need to account for, so the decimal is going to go right here. The actual answer is 15 and 96 hundredths. I'll compare that to my estimate to make sure I'm close and I didn't make some big calculation error or mistake with the decimal. If you had accidentally placed the decimal in between the 9 and the 6, and then you compared it to your estimate, you'd see that 14 is nowhere close to 159 and 6 tenths. And then you would have known, oh, I need to check this over and make a correction. Okay, let's practice. First estimate and then find the value of 11 and 8 tenths times five hundredths. I want you to pause the video and give this a try if you feel ready. If you don't feel ready, if you feel like you need to go over one more with me, keep the video rolling and just copy down the notes as we go. We're first going to estimate. So 11 and 8 tenths times five hundredths. The second factor is going to remain the same because it is just a one non-zero digit number. This number I'm going to round to the greatest place value so it can be solved mentally. If I round this number to the tens place, it is 10. So I'm going to solve 10 times 5 hundredths. Now in this case, I don't even need to split this up into 5 and 1 hundredths because we know how to multiply numbers by 10. So I'll use that strategy. When we multiply a number by 10, we move the decimal one place to the right, which means that the estimated answer is going to be 5 tenths. I move the decimal to the right, making it 10 times bigger. 5 tenths is my estimate. Now let's solve it outright. 11 and 8 tenths times 5 hundredths. Again, if you want to try this on your own, pause the video and solve it. If you want to move on and watch it with me to get more comfortable, keep the video rolling. Remember, we have to take a look at our place value. There's one decimal in the first factor and two in the second factor, which means that we're going to have a total of three decimal places in our answer. And now I'm going to solve. I put five hundredths down on the bottom because it only has one non-zero digit. 11 and 8 tenths has three non-zero digits, which means that there would have ended up being three lines if I multiplied it that way that I would have had to add together. This way is faster. So I'm going to multiply 5 times 8, which is 40, carry the 4. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 4 is 9, and 5 times 1 is 5. Now remember, we're going to have three decimal places. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, and put the decimal before that digit which means that the estimated answer is 59 hundredths. Because remember, this guy holds no value if there's not a non-zero digit that comes after it. So I'm going to compare that to my estimate, and 5 tenths and 59 hundredths are very close, so I can tell that that answer seems reasonable. Again, had you accidentally put the decimal one decimal place over, then you would have noticed that 59 is nowhere close to 5 tenths. Something went wrong. That's why we use estimation, to help us check if our answers seem reasonable. Okay, on this next one, I want you to solve it and submit your answers. So you are not going to watch me do this one with you first. Give this one a try. Let's practice. First, estimate and then find the value of 4 and 23 hundredths times 9 hundredths. And look back at the previous problems to problem solve if you're stuck. Look at the last estimation problem. So first estimate and then submit your answer. I'll go over it with you and then I'll prompt you when it's time to solve it out right. So first estimate. Okay, when we estimate, we know we're going to keep the divisor the same. 
I'm going to round the other factor so that I have one non-zero digit. If I round to the greatest place value, four and 23 hundredths will be rounded to just four because this is four or less. So I'm going to let this rest. So I end up with four times nine hundredths. Now I have two non-zero digits. So I'm going to first multiply those digits together. So basically we're splitting this up into nine and one hundredths. Four times nine, is 36, and then I still have to multiply that times 100. When we multiply that times 100, the decimal is going to move two places to the left, making it 100 times smaller. We want 100 of 36. Imagine 36, right? Imagine that this whole thing is 36, and we need to break this up into, oh my goodness, 100 little parts, right? You want to know just one of those little parts which is why when we multiply a whole number times a decimal, you get a uh, product that is smaller than the first factor. So let's solve. That's going to become 36 hundredths. Now go ahead and submit your actual answer. So what is four and 23 hundredths times nine hundredths? Okay, well we have two decimals in the first factor and two decimals in the second factor for a total of four decimals, which means that when we write our answer, we're gonna be, need to make sure that we put the decimal point four places to the left. So let's solve. Nine times three is 27. Nine times two is 18 plus two is 20. Nine times four is 36 plus two is 38. We are supposed to have four decimal places, which means I have to go one, two, three, four over it, and I'm going to put the decimal point there, which means that the answer for this would be 3,807 ten thousandths. And if I compare that to my estimate, I have 36 hundredths as my estimate, which is really close to 38 hundredths if I just read it to the hundredths place which means that my answer seems reasonable. I didn't make some big calculation error or mistake with the decimal point. Okay, your turn. You're going to submit your answer on this. This you're just solving just straight up mental math. Go ahead and solve three tenths times six hundredths. In order to solve this, you're going to need to account for the place value and multiply the non-zero digits. So I'm going to get you started. We're going to split six tenths up into six and one tenth, six tenths. Now you're going to solve first by multiplying these two together, and then your second step will be multiplying that times one tenth. Go ahead and solve and submit your answer. Okay, well our first step was to multiply three tenths times six. Three times six is 18, but remember this is three tenths. So our answer here is going to be to the tenths place. My second step is going to be to multiply that times one tenth. When I multiply times one tenth, the decimal moves one place to the left, and I get 18 hundredths. Another mental math problem. Solve the following mentally. And you can show your mental work, right? You can put quotes around that. Show your mental work on paper. Four tenths times six hundredths. Remember, you're going to want to split up either one of these into two parts to solve it mentally. Okay, here's what I did. I split this up into six and one hundredths. I'm first going to solve this by multiplying my four times my six, which is twenty-four. But this wasn't just four times six, it's four tenths times six. So that goes to the tenths place. I'll now multiply that times one hundredths. My decimal point is going to move two places to the left, making it one hundred times smaller. I'm finding one out of a hundred parts of two and four tenths. So that is going to give me an answer of twenty-four thousand. So for this problem, you're going to estimate, and then you're going to find the value of three and nine tenths times seven tenths. So let's estimate first, three and nine tenths
10th times 7 tenths. I know that this second factor is going to stay the same because it's one non-zero digit. I know that 39 times 7 is not a mental math problem, so I'm going to estimate it by rounding to the greatest place value, which would be 4 and 0 tenths, or just simply 4. Go ahead and solve the rest of this problem out and tell me what the answer would be, the estimated answer. Okay, we split this up into 7 and 1 tenth, and we do it in two steps. 4 times 7 is 28. Then I have to multiply 28 times 1 tenth, which means that the decimal point here will move one place to the left, giving me 2 and 8 tenths as my estimated answer. Now go ahead and solve it for the exact answer and submit your answer here. 7 times 9 is 63, 7 times 3 is 21, plus 6 is 27. I had one decimal in the first factor and one decimal in the second factor for a total of two decimal places, which means that the decimal is going to go between the 2 and the 7, giving me an actual answer of 2 and 73 hundredths. I'm going to compare that to the estimate to make sure that it seems reasonable, that I haven't made a mistake with the decimal place or done anything that seems really out of place, like a calculation error that's noticeable, and it seems reasonable. Okay, your turn again. This is another one for you to solve, and then I will go over the answers with you after you submit it. So first, estimate 48 and 2 tenths times 2 hundredths. Okay, first I want you to submit what did you round the first factor to? So what did you put in this spot here? We know that we're going to keep this the same because it's just one non-zero digit. When we round to the greatest place value, 48 and 2 tenths become 50. Now go ahead and submit what your answer is. 50 times 2 hundredths. We can split this up into 2 and 1 hundredth. We'll first multiply 50 times 2, which is 100, right? 5 times 2 is 10, plus the 0 on the end. And then we need to multiply that times... Oh, that's a multiplication sign, <laughs> times 100, which means that the decimal here is going to move one, two places to the left, making it one hundredth of 100. And think about that. What is one out of 100 out of 100, right? It'd be one. So this gives us one with two zeros in the tenths and the hundredths. So we can get rid of those because they don't hold value unless we're talking money. And one is the estimated answer. Now go ahead and solve this outright, the actual answer. 48 and 2 tenths times 2 hundredths. Okay, so we should have gotten 964 down here in our product, but we know it's not 964. If you put that as your answer, you forgot all about the place value. I have to the tenths up here and to the hundredths down here. Remember, that's like multiplying a number with 10 in the denominator times a number with 100 in the denominator, a tenth times a hundred. When we multiply those together, we know we're going to get a thousand, which is why we put the decimal point in the thousandth place right here. So the estimated answer is 964,000. We'll compare that. Oh, not the estimated answer. That's the actual answer. The actual answer is 964,000. We'll compare that to the estimated answer, and they are very close, so it's reasonable. Okay, you have two more problems to do for practice. Try this one, and you'll submit your answers. I'll go over them with you when you're done. First, estimate 12 and 7 tenths times 3 hundredths. We know that the second factor is going to stay 3 hundredths because it's a one non, only has one non-zero digit. We're going to round the next number. What did you round that other factor to? When we round that to the greatest place value, we get 10. 
We then can solve the rest of this problem mentally by just knowing what happens when you multiply a number like this times 10, which is what we learned previously. So when we multiply this number times 10, what do you get? The decimal moves one place to the right, making it 10 times bigger, and you get 3 tenths. That is the estimated answer. Now go ahead and solve 12 and 7 tenths times 3 hundredths, and tell me what the exact answer is. Don't forget to account for the place value. Okay, we have one decimal here and two decimals here, which means that your answer is going to go to the three decimal place. 3 times 7 is 21, carry the 2, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8, 3 times 1 is 3. We're going to the three decimal place, which means that the decimal goes in that spot, Math is zero here, and this is our actual answer, which is super close to our estimated answer, so we know that that seems reasonable. Okay, last problem for you to try here on this video, and watch me solve it along with you when you are done. Estimate three and nine tenths times four hundred. Four hundredth remains the same. I'm going to round the first factor to the greatest place value, which is four. You don't need to put the zero in the tenths place. It holds no value. And we're going to solve. Four times four equals sixteen. But remember, this is four and one hundredths. So we also have to multiply sixteen times one hundredths. My decimals here in the number sixteen when I multiply that times 100, it moves 1, 2 places to the left, making it 1 hundredth of 16, 100 times smaller, which means that the estimate is 16 hundredths. Now solve it for the exact answer and submit that here, 3 and 9 tenths times 4 hundredths. 9 times 4 is 36, 4 times 3 is 12, plus 3 is 15. We have one decimal place here, two decimal places here, which means it's going to go to the three decimal place, and our actual answer is 156,000, which is very close to 16 hundredths, right? We have 15 hundredths here and 16 hundredths here. It's a good estimate. Okay, great job practicing this out. You went through a number of problems with me, completed the lesson, and now you're going to do some independent practice. You can get started on it now, and if you need extra time, you can complete it in the extra time that you have in the afternoon, right? All that, that catch up time.